I remember Bainal Kaustain and I'm sure Sayyid is going to have tons of examples when it comes to things like these. Um, we have one of the khutaba, he said to me some time back, they were preparing for a majlis for the istishhad of Imam. The tragedy of Fatima to Zahra was that her and her husband's rights were taken away. Fadek and even Khaybar is not a historical event we should just look at. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, said that Fatima is a part of me. Whoever hurts her hurts me, and whoever hurts the Holy Prophet hurts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tragedy of Fatima was that she was attacked. Man aghadabaha Rasulullah goes straight to that point that he knows that later on there were individuals going to come that they will annoy, oppress anger Fatima to Zahra السلام, The tragedy of Fatima was and remains that we do not know the date of her martyrdom nor do we know the whereabouts of her grave كانت الادله تتراكم عندي بشكل كبير لكن في حاجز نفسي من الانتقال الى ان سمعت هاي الخطبه المباركه الحمد لله على ما انعم وله الشكر على ما الهم وعشت معها تماما كاني حقيقه كاني كنت اقف في مسجد رسول الله حقيقه In recent weeks I decided to investigate this further by having a closer look at the events surrounding the martyrdom of Lady Fatima while focusing on the sermon of Fadik which always stood out to me in the majalis Who is Fatima? Who is this noble lady that Rasulullah her father says fidaha abuha Join me on my journey as I meet different researchers and scholars to investigate this period in history. Winter has arrived in Afghanistan, and in the evenings and nights, temperatures reach up to minus 15 degrees Celsius. Our brothers and sisters struggle during these cold months to keep warm. Their houses are inadequate to keep the heat in, and poverty makes it harder to keep warm. Many will get ill, and some won't survive to see spring. IHDRF is determined to help. $150 is all it takes to provide heating for one household for the whole winter. That's $150 for four months worth of heating. We will provide each household with fuel that they can burn throughout the winter, helping each household to look after their most vulnerable and allowing their loved ones to keep warm. Visit www.ihdrf.org to spread the warmth. Assalamu alaikum. Imam Hussein TV wishes the well being and safety of all its viewers. Please be cautious and stay vigilant. We are all experiencing a difficult time right now internationally. In this time of anguish, in this time of depression, and in this time of emergency, Imam Hussein TV brings you the sacred shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam live from the holy city of Karbala. Don't feel that you are far from Karbala. Don't feel that you have left Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Join us on our live show, Welcome to Karbala. Send your salams and your salutations to the master of mergers. Maybe you have a request or a haja, maybe an oath or a qasam. Maybe you wish to send salams on behalf of your loved ones who are here and 
those who have departed. We will facilitate for you a passage to Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. The coronavirus may have closed the doors, but our hearts are still open to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Nothing will stop us bringing you the beloved of Sayyida Fatima sallallahu alayhi wa Nothing will stop us bringing you the brother of Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Nothing will stop us bringing you the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Join me and join the two golden domes. Welcome to Karbala, only on Imam Hussein TV3. Before we begin, my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, tomorrow night will be our final night where we will have a question and answer session. Please send all of your questions exactly the same time tomorrow night, inshallah, at 9.30 p.m. I know that there have been many discussions concerning the lectures. You may have questions surrounding the topic, differences of opinion, misconceptions, misunderstandings. Send them from now and inshallah tomorrow night will be an on open question and answer session. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salat wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Azimina وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أب القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدي ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد فلما توفيت دفنها زوجها علي ليلا ولم يؤذن بها أبا بكر وصلى عليها When she died, her husband Ali buried her in the night and he did not permit Abu Bakr to attend and he prayed over her if this was a reference from a Shi'i source, then you would say it's bias that you Shi'a have made up a fairy tale, a fairy tale that accuses certain renowned personalities in Islamic history of having this confrontation and going to the extent where the confrontation leads to the death of Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa alayha. However, when you find that this particular narration is part of a narration in Sahih al-Bukhari, it shows that our understanding of the confrontation between Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and the ruling authorities of the time is not just in Shi'i sources. If it was only in Shi'i sources, it still wouldn't be a problem because for me, at the end of the day, these are the sources of my school. As in sometimes we're duped into this idea that show me it in other school sources. Why? Why do I need to always prove from other schools? Other schools can have their own narrative. They can have their own understanding. 
They can have their own perception of who is to be revered and who there is a difference of opinion on. But I have my own literature and my own literature I can use anyway. But sometimes if I use my own literature, you'll find that there are certain people who say you're biased. This is in your books, not in ours. When I quote from part of a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, and everybody knows just how renowned Sahih al-Bukhari is after the Quran in other schools in Islam, then without a doubt when I do this, you'll find that it shows that there was an overlap and that this isn't a fairy tale that's being spoken of. Because you will find some who will say that the Shia have made up the most absurd lie that Abu Bakr, Omar, Fatima, Ali had no issues with each other. You see the Shia are going completely to another extreme. When I show that there is a hadith which says, فَلَمَّا تُوَفِّيَتْ When she died, دَفَنَهَا زَوْجُهَا عَلِيٌّ لَيْلًا Her husband Ali buried her in the night. وَلَمْ يؤذن, And he did not allow بِهَا أَبَا بَكْرٍ وَصَلَّ عَلَيْهَا And he did not permit Abu Bakr to be involved in that particular janazah, in that particular funeral. When this is mentioned within Sahih al-Bukhari, you cannot therefore come and tell me as a Shi'i that my perception of what took place is completely a fairy tale. You could say to me, for example, that I do not believe what you believe. For example, that there was a door and it was smashed on the daughter of the Holy Prophet. Peace be upon him and his family. But you cannot come to me and say that there wasn't a time where Fatima was angry with the first Khalifa and did not want to have anything to do with him until she died. When I therefore see that, not just in my literature, because sometimes a person says, how can we trust our sources that we use? Our reply is that if I see the same story being discussed in other schools in Islam, then there must be some sort of overlap. If it's only in my books, then someone has the right to say that you people have only made this up to suit your worldview, to suit your framework. But when I see other schools in Islam mention that there was a threat to burn a house, when I see other schools in Islam mention that FedEx was confiscated, when I see other schools in Islam mention that Imam Ali السلام, did not permit the first Khalifa to be at the funeral of Fatima, you cannot then come back to me and say that you Shia made up an absolute fairy tale. You can differ with me by saying, for example, something along the lines that show me hundreds of Sahih narrations or even one Sahih narration that this incident of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam being smashed with a door and a nail and a rib and a miscarriage show me one hadith that's like, unfortunately, like a judge looking at a prosecutor and saying to him, show me one proof only. You can only be allowed one proof in this court case. Prosecutors can say, judge, but there's incriminating evidence. There's parts of the rubble of the scene. There's other parts of the history of the person involved. You're telling me, show me only one proof is unfair. I have a multitude of different factors I need to bring together to set the scene. Have you ever in your life seen a judge who tells the prosecution, you're allowed only one proof of this whole court case? Prosecution will turn around and say, judge, this court case has got files on files on files of the history of the people involved. I need to open those files to see who has a history of slapping his sister, who has a history of killing ladies when they were early Muslims, who has a history of being abrasive, who has a history that even in some cases you'll find that people feared him from the females in the community. When I then build up a case, who has a history of telling the Prophet I will not join Osama's army because he's only 18, 19? Who has a history of, for example, saying you are delirious, the Quran's enough for us? When I therefore bring all of this together and then I bring this hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, I'm therefore able to paint a picture of what could have taken place. Am I going to dupe anyone into saying that even I sitting here as a lecturer, I'm going to reconstruct for you dot by dot what happened? No, I'm not. And I don't think anyone can ever reconstruct for you what happened exactly 1,400 years ago. Even those who ask for one sahih hadith about the incident of Fatima al-Zahra and the door and the rib, 
Even they will make films where they will put stories in there where I can ask them, show me a Sahih Sanad for that story about that Khalifa in that 30 part series. There are a lot of stories which don't necessarily have a Sanad that's Sahih. But when you bring a multitude of other factors, of other variants, then you can come together with an understanding of a sacred core. What we find therefore here within such a hadith is that this hadith highlights that there was an issue leading up to the funeral of the only daughter of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his family that was alive at the time. The only daughter of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, as we know, the others such as Zainab or Ruqayya or Umm Kulthum had died. That's why when someone tries to put forward the argument that Fatima is Zahra alayhi salam is the only daughter, even within Shia narratives, we believe that there could have been other daughters of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family and Sayyidah Khadija. It's a difference of opinion. But you find that the only daughter who was alive, her janaza, her salat al mayyid her funeral ends up being one where me and you may have more people attending it in COVID than she had in Medina at the pomp of Islam. In COVID, you may find 30 people at a funeral. The daughter and the greatest lady to have ever walked on the face of the earth did not have more than eight people at her funeral. Why? For what reason? Even if you're not Shia, and don't become Shia, choose whatever you want to choose, what brings you yaqeen and haqq. We're not here as missionaries for people to come towards our school. Allah guides. I don't guide. Nobody else guides. Allah guides the hearts. You look for the truth and ask, how is it that the most beloved and the lady who paradise is literally hers ends up with eight people at her funeral? Surely this would raise a question. Why is it that a number of famous companions are not allowed to be at that funeral? For what reason? Because I've seen and I've led Salat al-Mayyit in my own lifetime I've seen people come from the best of the best to the ones who never come to the mosque. I've never seen a family who turn around and say, you can't be here. When it's mayyit, we forget all our past differences. Isn't that true? When it's salat al mayyit, you forget your differences. You say, you let bygones be bygones. At least he came for the fatha. Maybe there's a change of heart. People soften. When I tell you, for example, don't come to my funeral, that's something. When the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, insists that certain people are not at the funeral because even the most hardcore of the hardcore of the extreme of the ones on the far right of islam even they will say to you i'm not sure who was at the funeral from the sahaba i'm not sure it's such a funeral of such a famous personality how could you not be sure surely you'd know who was there Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, you tell me someone who's a leader of a community in our day and age, they'll say to you, I bet when this person dies, the whole mosque will be full. Yet the daughter of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, dies with a question mark. Further than that, the Prophet had already said, Fatima is a part of me. Whoever angers her, angers me. You know, there are some who gave an interpretation to this. They said, this is about Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali angered baby Fatima. So they went. Said Imam Ali went behind baby Fatima's back and proposed for Abu Jahl's daughter, Juwayriya. Of course, of all the father-in-laws you want at the time, nobody better than Abu Jahl for Imam Ali alayhi salam. They say that therefore, when the Prophet found out, peace be upon him and his family, that Imam Ali alayhi salam had proposed for Abu Jahl's daughter, Juwayriya, the Prophet said, it's not for me to make halal that which is haram or haram that which is halal. Meaning that normally a man can marry more than one. I'm not, but my daughter Fatima is different. And what Ali has done, Ali should know Fatima is a part of me. Whoever angers her, angers me. Whoever angers me, angers Allah. Ali ibn Abi Talib has angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has angered me. This, we believe for us is a load of nonsense in all honesty. And when I look at some of the narrators of these traditions, in all honesty, they have already a hate to Imam Ali alayhi salam because they knew that that hadith, if used in the right context, can cause major trouble for certain personalities. When the Prophet says, Fatima is a part of me, whoever angers, angers me. And I know you'll find some people say, yes, but you'll even find it within Shia literature. Yes, let's look at the chains within Shia literature and see whether we take this as authentic or not. But there's a huge issue here as well. That Fatima is a part of me, whoever angers her, angers me. If 
the martyrdom of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam was not an issue of aqaid. Why is the Prophet made it one? You know you have some people saying, it's neither here or there. Whether we believe Bibi Fatima died or not, what's it going to make a difference? It's neither here or there to my belief system. Then why is the Prophet saying Fatima is a part of me and whoever angers her, angers me, angers Allah. In other words, the angering of Fatima becomes part of core aqeedah for the Shia. Core aqeedah. Because you always say to me that your problem with us is what happened after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa died in our imam belief. But my prophet is giving you a hint even before he dies. That whoever angers this lady, Fatima, it's not like angering a family member. You can anger a family member, but he wouldn't say, for example, Zainab is a part of me, Ruqayya is a part of me, Um Kulthum is a part of me. Whoever angers them, angers me, whoever angers me, no, Fatima is a part of me. Meaning not just part of my flesh. Her message is the embodiment of my whole message. Meaning that fighting Fatima means that you are fighting the very core of what I stood for. Therefore, tonight, let us examine one of the saddest moments in the history of this religion. And a moment that set the precedent for other sad funerals as well. And I'd like to do that in the following stages. Number one, when Medina found out that Imam, that Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam had died, what was their reaction? Number two, who was at the door of the house of Fatima telling them to calm down and giving them when the funeral could be? Number three, when it came to burying Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam in the night, wasn't it normal for people in Medina to be buried at night? So what's the issue of her being buried at night? And how did Imam al-Sadiq reply to the one who said to him, for what reason did she ask to be buried in the night? In reply to those who say, people died in the night, it was normal to have a night funeral. Number four, when Imam Ali buried her, how did he make sure that he buried her in a way where nobody could tell where her grave was? Number five, the next morning when people found out she had been buried, what did they decide to do? And why were ladies told, go and exhume the graves until you take her body out and we'll pray over her body again? Number six, when the yellow cloak of Ali comes out, what does that mean? And how much red was there in the veins and the eyes of Ali ibn Abi Talib that day when he saw people about to touch the grave of Fatima or its vicinity? Number seven, how comes now Imam Ali salam is ready for war? And yet when she was alive, he wasn't ready to take it that little step further. Further than that, who was around him? Who helped him when he buried? And how did he ask Abu Dhar to take Hassan and Hussein back home? And what were his words where we will go later in relation to how he felt upon seeing that burial? Let's examine this and dissect the topic in complete depth. When Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam died, of course there was a clamor in Medina, no doubt. Even if people could not necessarily support her, there were people who had known her for at least 10 years of their life. Remember Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam done hijrah with her father. So when she came to Medina, she was only 9 years of age or so. And so many people in Medina had already known her. And so you can imagine the news when it went around, there was much sadness in the whole of Medina. People, in many cases, begun to call out the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Why? Because he had just died earlier. It was a double blow in Medinian society. All of them came to the house of Imam. When they came to the house, Abu Dhar al-Ghafari was at the door. When Abu Dhar was at the door and he saw there was a clamor outside and there were people calling out Fatima al-Zahra's name and he also saw that in the house, the likes of Sayyidah Zainab were heartbroken that their mother had died. Abu Dhar came out and acted truly as an uncle to Al Muhammad. Do not be surprised if you ever see Imam Ali calling Abu Dhar uncle because that was a revered figure in the circles of Ahlul Bayt. Abu Dhar al Ghafari came out the moment he came out. He said to everybody, Calm down. Try and calm down. This is a difficult moment for the household. Tonight we will bury her in the night. Bury her in the night could be what time? Could be 6 p.m., could be 8 p.m. Could be 9 p.m. Most people would think that by 9 p.m. you'd probably knock out, go to sleep, and then wake up maybe later for Fajr. Of course, he knew very well 
that Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam had wanted to go out and bury her at a time where Medina would be asleep. Imam Ali alayhi salam, this was the second ghusl he had to do within a few months. And many people do not appreciate what a blow this ghusl was to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Because he himself used and wiped with the same cloth that he used for the Holy Prophet onto Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Imam Ali, Fatima al-Zahra, in her will, it said, I want two people to be at my ghusl. Asma bint Umais, who at the time was married to the first Khalifa. Later on, she'd marry Imam Ali alayhi salam. Of course, she had known Imam Ali's family for years because she was the wife of Ja'far al-Tayyar previously, the brother of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He said, Asma bint Umais and Imam Ali. They're the only two who could be at my ghusl. They were there at the ghusl. Asma gives us the narrations from the ghusl. And she would mention to us, for example, that Imam used the cloth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. And he also, at the same time, had made sure that everything was looked after in the best of ways until she said that he led the funeral prayer of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi in the house. And he led, he recited the takbirs, how many? Five of them. And she says that also there was a mention that the angels had also participated in the Salat of Fatima. Because do not be surprised, Jibra'il alayhi salam, the same Jibra'il who had spoken to Maryam, why is there a problem if he speaks to Fatima? I get surprised when people say that you Shia believe in these extreme beliefs that Gabriel could speak to. Fatima, okay, so in the Quran, how does Mary find out that she's about to have Jesus? The angel comes to her. But is Mary a prophet of God? Not according to most. So if Gabriel can come to Maryam, Gabriel could not come to Fatima. And of course he would come, and we have the narrations of the Mus'haf. But here, you have that they attend the Salah. They have the people who are there in the Salah, a limited number of people. This limited number were the ones who Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam herself had mentioned are the only ones that she wants present at that funeral. Fatima, you have so many thousands in Medina. Why don't you open it up to all Medina? Because before she had died, she had made clear, those who have oppressed me, usurped our rights, I do not want them anywhere near my janazah. Nowhere near. But Fatima al-Zahra, you know very well that a Muslim, according to certain schools in Islam, is haram for them to stay angry with their Muslim brethren for more than three days. There should be a method of reconciliation, a method in which you talk to each other, a method in which you open up to each other. But we realize here that Fatima al-Zahra was making a stand that this isn't a personal issue between me and the first Khalifa. You see, some people, how do they portray it? In non-Shi'i thought, Fatima is not ma'soom. And the first Khalifa is not ma'soom. Two people have a tiff. What's your issue? People are not ma'soom. The Prophet himself is ma'soom, they say, when it comes to revelation. Outside of revelation, even he can have a odd blunder because he frowns at blind people when they walk into gatherings. He frowns, me and you, me and you, we see a blind person, we show the best akhlaq. But my prophet who came to teach akhlaq frowns at a blind person. So if they doubted some of his infallibility, you think there's going to give any benefit to Fatwa al-Zahra's infallibility? Fatwa al-Zahra, according to some, non masum non Shia, I don't believe Fatima is masum Isma for Fatima for us is huge. The same way Allah chose, purified and chose Mary, why wouldn't you do it with Fatima when Fatima is greater? Yes, Mary was the greatest for her people until Fatima was born. So what you had was, some say it's just a tiff. Fatima, non masum Because some Shia need to realize this point. Some Shia cannot understand why others don't see the world they see. You know, for us, we cannot understand if someone looks in a different lens to us. Non Shia's lens of Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam is that Fatima al Zahra is a human who can make mistakes. And that the first Khalifa is a human who can make mistakes. So when two non masums have an argument, why are you getting fussed? For us, no. Ahlul Bayt are a hujjah for us. When Ahlul Bayt say something and somebody else say something, we take Ahlul Bayt as a hujjah. That's why, you know, when other schools in Islam tell you we respect Ahlul Bayt like you do, say, do you take them as a hujjah? If now a companion and an imam say something, who would you take? The imam's word or the companion's word? Fatima al-Zahra also knew there were traditions going around at the time. What were they? Whoever dies without knowing the imam of their time dies a death of a jahil. 
Does anyone have the audacity to say that Fatima al Zahra's anger with the first Khalifa means she died jail? Fatima knew that if I make the stand, that hadith of whoever dies without knowing the leader, or let's put it in another way, whoever dies without having a bay'ah around their neck, dies the death of a jahil, for example. If you die without having pledged to the leader of your time, I haven't. So what are you going to call me, jahil? I'm Fatima. You know me. My father is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. You all quote the hadith that there are four women of Jannah. I don't know the imam of my time according to you. I don't have a bay'ah for the leader you've taken. Are you going to stand in front of my grandfather and gentlemen, call me jahil? Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam by insisting that certain personalities are not at her funeral. And again, I quoted earlier Bukhari where it clearly says that he did not let Abu Bakr come towards where? Come towards the funeral. By insisting she was making a clear theological point. It wasn't just a female who's emotional, because people love to put this forward. It's a female doesn't get emotional and she's young. So she's young. So a person just dies because of emotion because they're young. Very rare for us to hear that someone 18 years old all of a sudden just died because of emotion. You know, I, I'm just emotional that my dad's died, so I'm going to die. You know, sometimes when you hear an 18-year-old has suddenly died. Oh, forget 18. 33-year-old you hear has suddenly died. Wouldn't it be like, wow. How? How? What's the reason? But when the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, dies at that age, nobody bats an eyelid. They say, oh, she was emotional about her death. Emotion kills you? Sa'ana, I'm crying because someone has died. I cry. Nabi Yaqub cried more than I will ever cry. He became blind. Nabi Yaqub died. So I ask you, Fatima, daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, you're telling me that she died. They say, yes, but ladies were dying young at the time, said Ammar. Lots of ladies were dying young. Asma bint Umayz didn't die young. Khadija certainly didn't die young. We're talking 60s. Aisha lived all the way until which age? She lived all the way maybe in her 50s. Um Salama. Why don't you bring these names up? Bibi Fidda. Did they all die young? But the lady who comes from the purest of the pure, she died young, just died randomly young. All of a sudden she just passed away. Is that what happened? Fatima al-Zahra salam knew very well what I am doing is theology. What I am showing all of you is that if you're uncertain what happened after the Prophet, you will always ask one question, that you will never know where I'm buried. I will leave that as my mark. Because you know Shia, Shia love graves. We're accused of the grave worshippers, aren't we? People say that you Shia are grave worshippers. You Shia go to graves and you worship your imams. So like you can keep saying it. What year are we in now? 2020. Wallah, you keep saying, repeating this thing, repeating this thing. Even we're getting bored of it now. If, you had, if it had ended 600 years ago, I'd say, well done. You finished us off. 2020, and we're seeds and the trees are planting everywhere. Anyway, what you have is that you call us the Shia grave worship. We Shia love to honor the family of the Prophet. We will tell you where everyone's buried. Isn't it true? Even we can go ziyara to places of companion, of companion, of the companion of an imam. How many of you have been on ziyara group? Companion of the companion of the companion of an imam. So well, who's this we're going to? He's the son of an imam, son, son's cousin, son, footprint. Shia, wherever they go in the world, they will always make sure that that part of issue, what is that? A blood drop from the head. What is that? Footprint. What is that? Fingerprint. What is that? Some hair. What is that? She fell here. But where's she buried? She's buried over there, but she fell here. With all of this, the greatest lady in Shia history made sure that even her own didn't know where she's buried. Because she wanted to make it clear Every year when Fatimiya comes, those who tell you it's a fairy tale, ask them, where was I buried? Of course, there are those who can reply with this. There are those who say, well, we don't know where Aisha, for example, the wife of the Prophet is buried. But that's only a recent demolition of Jannat al baqiyah that has made you answer that way. Jannat al baqiyah weren't demolished. We could point to where the graves are. 
But when Jannat al baqiq got demolished, that's where you came with such an answer. That's your problem, not mine. I can show you where the first Khalifa is buried. I can show you where the second Khalifa is buried. I can show you where the third Khalifa is buried. I can even show you where some Umayyads may be buried in Syria. I can show you where some Abbasids are buried. I can show you where some Seljuks are buried. I can show you where some Ottomans are buried. I can show you where some Safawids are buried. I can show you where some Boyids are buried, where some Fatimids are buried. Where all of these different empires I can show you. You can never show me where Fatima is buried. And it kills you that you can't. So what do you end up saying? Instead of thinking and making your conscience pure, you end up bringing different angles to the discussion. What do I mean? Because you have one of their scholars was asked, that is it true Fatima was buried in the night? Because in Bukhari it says, Dafanaha, Zawjuha, Aliyun, Laylan. Ali buried her. Where Ali buried her in the night. Says Ali, buried her in the night. So what did one of the scholars say? One of the scholars turned around and said, normal, normal. Aisha was buried in the night. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was buried in the night. Why is there a clamor that Fatima was buried in the night? Firstly, my dear brother, finish the hadith before you say, why is there a clamor? You, it's your book, not mine. Bukhari is not a hujja on me. But it's your book. And your book says, Dafanaha zawjuha aliyun laylan walam yu'thin biha Aba Bakrin. And he didn't allow Abu Bakr to come. If it's normal to bury in the night, why is there an addition that he says, and he didn't allow Abu Bakr to come? When you say to me, it's normal to have someone buried in the night. It's very rare to say, listen, I have one of my good friends. We buried, we went to his father's funeral in the night. Yeah. But never did I see him say, everybody can come in the night, but accept this person. Firstly, therefore, when you say to me that burying in the night is normal, so why is Abu Bakr prevented from being in that place, which is normal? Why? For what reason? Secondly, Al-Bata'ini and his father narrate from who? From Imam al-Sadiq They ask him, why did Bibi insist that she should be buried in the night? And Imam al-Sadiq replied, so the two Arab men cannot be at her funeral. Therefore, for you it may be a hujjah. You may say that the Prophet was buried in the night, Aisha was buried in the night. For me, your book tells me clearly, Sahih al-Bukhari, that Fatima al-Zahra alayhi funeral, Abu Bakr was prevented from being there. And not only your book, my book more importantly, Imam al-Sadiq, where is this? Because someone might turn around and say, where is this hadith? Huyun akhbar al rida of Shaykh al-Saduq. Where al-Bata'ani and the father narrate from Imam al-Sadiq, they ask him, why did Bibi insist to be buried in the night? He said, because she did not want the two Arab men to be there. Clear. Very clear. Fatima al-Zahra salam had clearly a problem with those two. Now someone can turn around and say, but Sayyidina, this is a confrontation. Why does it affect us today? It may not affect you today. It really may not. It affects me. And therefore I'll speak about it. For you, it may not affect you. For you, you can go on saying what you want to say. You can focus on other areas. We're not forcing you. But our children need to understand. People out there with free minds need to understand. Therefore, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Fatima al-Zahra had told him, Salman, tick. Abu Dhar, tick. Miqdad, tick. Ammar, tick. I'm going to stop there. Why? You Shia don't like Sahaba. So what are these for? Random human beings who came from space? What are these? These are people who I just come down from Mars and just landed in Medina one day? Because when you tell me that I as a Shia do not like Sahab. So what? I just picked out, they gave me a box with names and I picked out Salman, uh, Abu Dhar, Miqdad, Ammar. And you know what? These four sound good to me. I'm going to like them. Don't tell me I as a Shia do not like Sahab. I as a Shia respect those. A, who fought with the Prophet, peace be upon his family, lost their lives at bat battles like Badr and Uhud and Mu'ta. B, those who remained loyal to Imam Ali alayhi salam and loyal to Ahlul Bayt salawatullah wa salam and certainly did not raise camels to fight them. 
So for me, that's my criteria. You may differ with me. Of course you can. I don't mind. You can have your own narrative. At the end of the day, I can't force you into something. We go to our own separate graves. You have your grave, I have mine. You might tell me I'm completely wrong. I don't mind. But don't tell me I don't respect Sahaba. Yesterday, how many Sahaba did I mention? Salman, Abu Dhar, Miqdad, Ammar, Khuzayma, the Shahadatain, Uthman bin Hunayf, Sahel bin Hunayf, Abu Ayyub, Al Ansari. I mentioned all of these names. Buraida. I mentioned all of these. Malik ibn Nuwayra. When I mention all of these, why then do you say you Shia? I don't respect Sahaba. I've mentioned all these names. Hudayf al Yaman, I mentioned. Why do you say I don't respect? But for me, Fatima al Zahra and Imam Ali are a barometer. They are a scale by which I show or I understand what took place. Salman, Fatima Zahra said he comes to my funeral. Abu Dhar comes to my funeral. Miqdad comes to my funeral. Ammar comes to my funeral. Who else? And you should name your children these names, my brothers and sisters. Today I see random names being given to our children, our households. Name your children these names. So therefore, what do you have? You have Salman, Abu Dhar, Miqdad, and Ammar. And then you have Abbas, uncle of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And his son, Fadl, that being another one. And of course, who else? Obviously, who would be there for their mom? Imam al-Hassan and Imam al-Hussein. They all went with Imam Ali. Medina was asleep. And they took the janazah. And they went towards Jannat al baqiyah When they went to Jannat al baqiyah Imam Ali dug up to 40 different graves so nobody would know which one it could be. Purposely. Some say seven, others say up to 40. So that nobody would know. My wife has said to me that she doesn't want anyone to know where I'm buried. I'll make sure that people cannot tell. He even done the 40 in Baqi' but that doesn't mean she's buried in Baqi' Otherwise, it would be too obvious. If I'm going to put 40 in one area, there's such a... No. Because our ulama say either she was buried in her house or she was buried, you know, in that area they say is a part of Jannah between the house and the mihrab and the mihrab and the member of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. Or they say in the house of the Holy Prophet or in Jannah al -Baqi'ah. Nobody knows and nobody will ever know until her great-grandson emerges. And only then we will know. And the beauty about her great-grandson is whether you're Shia or not, you still have to believe he's either a descendant of Hassan or Hussein. So it all goes back to Fatima anyway. It's all about Fatima anyway. Because he's from the grandsons of Fatima. And they say Fatima is not a big deal. The man who comes to bring justice at the end is her grandson. Forty graves dug up. Only they were aware of which one is Fatima's exact one. Nobody else. Imam Ali salam was there. He made sure everything was done. Everything was in order. Medina was asleep. He asked for people to go back home. Next day, people heard. That, Did you hear Fatima Zahra has been buried? She's been buried, she's been buried, she's been buried. It came towards the authorities. When it came towards the authorities, the authorities were of course angered by this. Why were we not present? Because clearly, politically, I don't need to go further into this. But politically, there are some weddings you should always be at and there's some funerals you should always be at. Do you agree with me? There's some weddings politically. You like, congratulations, I'm so happy for you. Deep down, you're like, I just need your vote. Wallah, I couldn't care to look at your face. And there's some funerals, you're like, condolences, condolences. Wallah, you couldn't stand the guy, but he's the same political party as you and you have to hide. Weddings and funerals. And that's one thing you don't want to miss, especially the only daughter of your prophet who was alive. You want to be there, don't you? People had found out, first Khalifa was not there, second Khalifa was not there. So what was the news? They ordered for ladies. They said, get these ladies, let them go to the graves, dig out Fatima's body, and we'll do the janazah again. Firstly, how normal is it for someone to exhume anybody, let alone hers? I don't know how normal that is. But from a distance, they saw a man coming. He was wearing a yellow cloak. He only wears that yellow cloak when there's rage inside him. He was wearing a yellow cloak, has red eyes, clearly having been crying a lot, veins popping. 
And he came, and the narration says, and by the way, this narration is in our books. Don't worry about those who say to you, show it in my books, other schools. Yeah, just focus on your own books and chill. Don't worry about others. Yellow cloak, vein popping, red eyes. And he was leaning on Dhul Fiqar. Leaning on Dhul Fiqar. Just imagine, I want everybody who's watching this to picture the scene that I'm saying. He's leaning on Dhul Fiqar and he's looking at them. And he's saying, so what do you intend to do? They're like, why didn't she... Why didn't you let us come to the Janazah? Why didn't you to inform us? He said it was her will that you don't attend. He said, I don't want them to attend. Sahih al-Bukhari said, Abu Bakr was not allowed to be there by Imam Ali. Shia literature, don't say mine's a fairy tale. Admit a threat to burn. Admit a non-attendance of Janazah. You want to fill the gaps with your own conclusion? Do it. The day of judgment's a long day. We got to look forward to it. He's leaning on the fiqar. So they said in front of him, then well, we're going to have to dig up her body. And ladies will do it. Someone said to them, when he wears that yellow cloak, it's not good to talk to him like that. Because the yellow cloak only comes out when he is about to move into a moment of rage. Question, why didn't you have that rage at the door? Because you had a will from the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, about Fatima and what would ensue. In this moment, Fatima's died now. It's in your hands. What do you want to do? And a person looked around at the other. He said, I think if you remove one stone over here, the son of Abu Talib will cause bloodshed and kill everybody here. Everybody. They knew. That that yellow cloak, when it comes out, forget it. Because if you thought Marhab got it, and you thought Amr ibn Wudd al-Amri got it, and you thought Muawiyah, half his family got it from one side, and you thought, for example, those at Hunayn got it, you've not seen nothing yet. I lost her, I had to remain patient. And the Prophet, now after she's died, Amana has gone back. So now it's in my hands. Anything happens here. It's over. It's finished. And from there, they decided that it's better not to do that. And he knew very well that my wife now can sleep comfortably. Knowing that from now until the day of judgment, however much people try and cover what happened to her, you need to only ask one question. Where is her grave? But at the same time, there was a broken heart inside him. A broken heart where he realized that the love of his life was no longer with him. You look at Imam Ali's words when he came towards the grave to bury her. And honestly, you take yourself on a night like this to Medina. Take your hearts to Medina. How many of us wish we were in Medina on a night like this? And being in Medina on a night like this, being able to be next to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. I want everyone, wherever you may be, lower your head. I just want you to imagine Medina, look towards Medina on a night like this and try and picture the words of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam al-Sadiq used to say, lower the heads, even if you feign crying, even if you don't cry, just even keep your heads lowered. Picture Medina on a night like this, Imam Ali by the grave, knowing that he has the orphans of Al Muhammad in the household. Imam Ali alayhi salam, knowing he's got the orphans, he would mention at that moment that Hassan's at home, Hussein's at home, the orphans are all at home on a night like this. Peace be upon you, Prophet of Allah, from myself and your daughter that has been laid to rest in your neighborhood and who has united very quickly with you. My patience has parted away due to the separation of your daughter. And my strength has faded, however, after facing 
the heart-rending grief of your separation, all sorrow that reached me are less in comparison to that of yours. I cannot forget the moment when I laid your sacred body into the grave with my own hands. And at the time of death, your head was lying on my chest and your sacred soul parted. Indeed, we are Allah's and indeed we return back to him. O oh, Prophet, the trust that is Fatima that you bestowed upon me, that you bestowed me has been returned to you but my sorrow has become everlasting I will spend my night sleepless until I too am united with you very soon your daughter will relate to you how the nation united to oppress us and you may ask her how this occurred when a very short period of time had elapsed after the past passing away such that your remembrance had not even gone my dear brothers and sisters on a night like this uh, he fainted by the grave of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam in his dream he saw his beloved Fatima in front of him uh, he, she looked towards him she said to him ya amir al mu'mineen if you can return back to the house <laughs> why because the orphans may wake up and they may be scared with their mother Fatima not with them anymore no heart was as soft as the heart of Amir al muminin he returned back to the house he saw Hassan and Hussein sleeping for the boys to lose a mother it's difficult but for the daughter who's used to her mom it's not easy to separate from her he looked around where are my beloved daughters he saw Zainab on the prayer mat of her mother Zainab Zainab my dear Zainab why are you awake why are you awake it's past the time of your sleep she said to him father 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 my mother Fatima would know normally be praying her night prayers at this moment uh, father 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 I miss my mother Fatima father father where is my mother Fatima uh, that night Zainab broke his heart yes because he couldn't take that she was lonely uh, then how about the night of the 11th of Muharram uh, how did you feel seeing Zainab Zainab slapped from one side and kicked from another how did you feel Zainab becoming an umbrella for the feelings of your granddaughters because what happened with Fatima the Zahra Al Muhammad thought would only happen once Fatima had her house burned Fatima was slapped Fatima had a baby killed in front of her they thought that surely this would be the only time when and they saw in Karabala, they saw the repeat of what happened to Fatima. If Fatima lost the baby Muhsin, come look at the baby of Rabab as he fell towards the ground. If Fatima saw the fire burning, then come see the tents burning, the dress of Sukaina running from one place to another. If Fatima saw the slaps towards her, then her granddaughters from Karamala to Kufa to Sham were slept one by one with no one to look after them. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Ya Allah, raise us with Muhammad and Al Muhammad. Ya Allah, raise us with the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib Al Asri wa Zaman. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the originators of this majlis. Inshallah, tomorrow night we will continue with our final night. Let's pray for all of those brothers and sisters who are feeling unwell, facing the trials of COVID and other trials at the moment with their health. 
We have an eight-year-old boy who's facing difficulties with his surgery by the name of Ammar. Ya Allah, we ask you in the name of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam cure him. Cure all those who face difficulties with the eye of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma yujibu al-muftar idha da'ah wa yakshib al-su'ah. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Surah Al-Fatiha in honor of all of our marhumin. But before it, a salawat to welcome Mullah Ali Fadil. Understand her. Understand her. Were it not for her creator, there would be no religion. There would be no religion. No Muhammad and no Haider would exist were it not for her. There would be no religion. There would be no religion. This is Fatima Zahra. This is Fatima Zahra. Understand her, understand her. Were it not for her creator, there would be no religion. There would be no religion, no Muhammad and no Haidar would exist were it not for her. There would be no religion, there would be no religion. This is Fatima Zahra, this is Fatima Zahra. طيمة زهراء This is فاطمة زهراء Understand her, understand her Were it not for her creator There would be no religion There would be no religion No Muhammad and no Haider Would exist were it not for her There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra Muhammad says watching the planets rotate They'd not be, were not me And my city would not be without its gates No Ali, I'd not be No Ali, I'd not be Yet without space what can sun and moon create They'd falter and shatter Space is a 
fail for a woman prostrate Fatima, my mother Fatima, my mother Her prostration, her prostration Is truly worth all creation What a divine prostration What a divine prostration from her tears were born a nation With heaven their destination There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra The stardust that was born with creation's birth In a veil it wails And the cross that was once used to birth the earth, her prayer beats, hold its seeds, her prayer beats, hold its seeds. The head of Judgment Day bows when she comes forth, heads lower, she tower. If her sons are heaven's masters, what's her worth? If her sons are heaven's masters, what's her worth? Her shadow doesn't know, her shadow doesn't know None were worth her, none were worth her But he who splits the hereafter He who splits hell and heaven He who splits hell and heaven It's enough to say her husband Had we not obeyed his Command. There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra On the souls of women God made for her a queen On the souls of women God made her a queen and Sheba envies her The mother of Jesus herself had not seen Such a sight bathed in light Such a sight bathed in light In the queen of women of wealth She's not been understand Heaven's hand The Lord would make it that there would be no men and she'd rule Jinn and all And she'd rule Jinn and all There'd not be men, there'd not be men And she'd rule both earth and heaven Commanding earth's rotation Commanding earth's rotation Does it matter, she's a ruler If we don't take her a teacher There would be no religion there would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra When Muhammad would miss the heaven sent He would smell a veil For this world Fatima's veil was not meant It hushes its roses When Muhammad would miss the heaven sent He would smell a veil For this world Fatima's veil was not meant it hushes at roses, it hushes at roses With verse 33 by the Lord had been sent Was she not? I think not I think the Satan's knots are left withered bent Where she walks, heaven stalks Where she walks, heaven stalks Whites of her eyes, whites of her eyes Rise, a plains of heaven where truth lies No plains for her are hidden No plains for her are hidden Lifeless idols shriek in despair When she prays and were not her prayer There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra Veiled like a pearl's veiled by an ocean 
And her seas and no man sees And veiled are her true lovers and children Yesterday and today Yesterday and today If you love her then to her veil Listen, her costumes speak volumes What you value most is always left hidden What you value most is always left hidden Soothe her rib, wear hijab Soothe her rib, wear hijab She adores you, she adores you And she knows your worth and value Hold your beauty deep within Hold your beauty deep within She did not die for your wails Understand that without veils There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra the women of God stand guard at her door The women of God stand guard at her door Both Hajar and Sarah And from the eyes of Mary and tears of blood pour When fire would flicker When fire would flicker The fumes and ash burn the sea of mercy sure And Maryam curses them The fumes and ash burn the sea of mercy sure And Maryam curses them She who is adored by heavens on the floor this candle they trample, this candle they trample I hear a sound, I hear a sound When the womb of Zahra they pound The wail of her children, the wail of her children the rib breaks and heavens shatter If the throne of God would falter There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra This is Fatima Zahra The universe lies idle on her bed the universe lies idle on her bed two moons weep as she sleeps moons over the sparkle of the eyes of Muhammad by Hassan screams Hussein by Hassan screams Hussein the universe lies idle on her bed two moons weep as she sleeps moons over the sparkle of the eyes of Muhammad by Hassan and screams Hussein The sun by whose gravity these moons are led The lion who'd not run Ali who bathed in the tears of Mahrab shed Ali who bathed in tears eyes of Marhab shed He shrivels and waves He shrivels and waves who was this light, who was this light That made Haidari on his own plight To what stars does she glisten To what stars does she glisten Veiled in life, shrouded in death Ali wishes with her last breath There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra Understand her, understand her Were it not for her creator There would be no religion there would be no religion No Muhammad and no Haidar Would exist were it not for her There would be no religion There would be no religion This is Fatima Zahra Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah 
وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاي أبي الفضل العباس واخته زينب جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد The tragedy of Fatima to Zahra was that her and her husband's rights were taken away. Fadek and even Khaybar is not a historical event we should just look at. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, said that Fatima is a part of me. Whoever hurts her hurts me, and whoever hurts the Holy Prophet hurts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tragedy of Fatima was that she was attacked. Man Agadabaha Rasulullah goes straight to that point that he knows that later on there were individuals going to come that they will annoy, oppress, anger Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. The tragedy of Fatima was and remains that we do not know the date of her martyrdom, nor do we know the whereabouts of her grave. كانت الأدلة تتراكم عندي بشكل كبير لكن في حاجز نفسي من الانتقال. إلى أن سمعت هاي الخطبة المباركة الحمد لله على ما أنعم وله الشكر على ما ألهم وعشت معها تماما كأني حقيقة كأني كنت أقف في مسجد رسول الله حقيقة In recent weeks I decided to investigate this further by having a closer look at the events surrounding the martyrdom of Lady Fatima while focusing on the sermon of Fedek, which always stood out to me in the Majalis. Who is Fatima? Who is this noble lady that Rasulullah, her father, says Fidaha Abu? Join me on my journey as I meet different researchers and scholars to investigate this period in history. شهادت پیغمبر اسلام را قرآن کریم تعبیر کرده به انقلاب درس اما بعد از شهادت پیغمبر اسلام وارونه شد منقلب شد انقلاب کامل انقلبتم علا اعقاب کن اول کشته سیاسی بعد از پیغمبر خدا شخص حضرت زهره صلی الله علیه حضرت زهره شمشیر برداشته بوده جنگ کرده بودن با اینا حرف زده مگه جواب حرف کشتنه از از زهره حرف زدن خود به خود شما هم خود به بخورید شما هم حرف بزن اسلام یعنی پیغمبر خدا چیز دیگه اسمش اسلام نیست Honey, I remember Bain al and I'm sure Sayyid is going to have tons of examples when it comes to things like this. Um, we have one of the khutaba, he said to me some time back, they were preparing for a majlis for the istishhad of Imam Zainul Abidin. Who he was preparing like normally as an agreement with the Husseinia, everything doing, local Husseinia, his missus was expecting. 
a couple of hours, hour and a half before istishhad of Imam Sajjad, he's going for the majlis. Baba, there was his wife started to experience abnormal pain in the stomach. Mm. And it seemed that this is an emergency. She needs to go to the A&E there and then.